All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awakening to Happiness Now Global Series. It's a brand new season. This is the summer, autumn 2021 season. I'm so happy to be back with all of you. I'm so excited. Uh, I don't know where the summer went, but it's like fleeting now. Like we have two more days of summer left uh, for this year. And but I'm so excited that you're that we're back with you all. And I want to again, again, again say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support, all of your love, all of your blessings. Oh my God, I could not have done this without you. I'm really, really serious. You know, my husband is doing great. Um, uh, not, out of, no, not out of the woods, right? But he's doing great, but I could not uh, have done it without all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And like I said, we're back with a brand new season. Some of your favorites, most of your favorites, and a few new people to uh, share with you this season. And today, <laughs> my good friend, Matthew John is here with us. Oh, and I just love Matthew. He is so nice. He's so authentic. He's so real. Oh my goodness. I had a, a soul plan reading with him recently and I absolutely loved it. It was so... <sighs> gave me such clarity, you know, and um, just made me feel really good. And, and Matthew has always been, ever since he found out about Robert, he's just been there the whole time sharing with, with me whatever he can about Robert, with the messages he's getting, so caring and so kind. So I'm so glad that he's back here with us again today to launch the season. And today yeah. we are, yeah, and we're talking about timelines, alternate realities, and creating your preferred timeline. So it's like, I always love talking about creation, right? So creation, manifesting, I'm all about that. So some of what we're going to discuss and talk about today are how timelines, space, time, and alternate realities work, how the modern world stacks the odds against us so we stay stuck, how to stop getting derailed by other people, um, other people's individual timelines, and how to create the timeline you want to create, and how we can create the collective timeline where ascension occurs and so much more. And Matthew is going to be doing a few past life readings at the end of the call for people just to share what, you know, how brilliant he is at it, how tapped in he is, the wonderful information he gets for people. So we're going to do all of that and more. Um, and for those of you who don't know Matthew, like I said, he was on our show a couple of times this year. And I really enjoyed um, having him on the shows. And he is an internationally recognized spiritual teacher a spiritual mentor, a psychic, an intuitive healer, a starseed guide, an energy healer, and medical intuitive who worked with the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters. He is a gifted intuitive, a wisdom channeler, and a transmitter of healing frequencies. All that and more. So, I mean, he's really, really talented, and I'm so glad that he's here with us. Matthew, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you're here. Oh my God, it's going to be so much fun and we're going to learn. We always learn so much when you're here with us, right? And timelines, that's huge, you know, especially the timeline that we're in right now. It's like, yeah, we could use some advice. We could use some information, some wisdom on how we can switch tracks, you know, perhaps, you know, create a different timeline that works for us, you know, and whatever else, right? So I'm glad you're here. Before we start, though, I just want to say a few quick little things for everyone. Um, like I said, this is the first show of this season, and um, we're going to be having shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays and some Wednesdays, just so you all know. And um, this season, the special offers are going to be available for two weeks, and that's it. And then mm. at the end of the season, I will open up the replays again, and they'll be available again, but for two weeks, and that's it. And if you purchase your the packages in the first 24 hours, and there's a special code that you can use to get 10% off. And that's only in the first 24 hours. So for those of you who are watching on the weekend, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the code for that, and I just, I, just, I just created it. So it's like it's brand new. I just created it. And it is TACS10. All right. So TACS10. And so right now, if you were to use that code, it would only be available for Matthew's offers from today's show. And it's only going to be available for 24 hours. So by the end of tomorrow, September 15th at 11, 12 midnight, my time, 6 p.m. Eastern, that's it. Okay. So please, you know, recognize that. Please respect my, you know, new way of doing things. And, you know, jump, jump on the offers when they are available for you. Okay. Because, you know, it's like I want to make the offers available as they come for each of the speakers. Right. We have a lot of them. Right. So jump on them when you can, okay? 
All right, so now, <laughs> Matthew, and like I said, I just did a soul plan reading with Matthew, I guess a month ago, right? It feels like a month ago, but I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, about a month ago, yeah. yeah. And, so. and it was great. Oh my, it's like, because like, you know, I get a lot of readings, right? I, I book a lot of readings. I get a lot of readings and healings and everything. And I was like, I was like, oh, what's he going to tell me? I don't know. It's like, it's like, oh, it's just another reading. But no, I loved it. It was great. He, I, you know, Matthew was like awesome. He's like tuned in. He's tapped in. The information that he got and the, and the intuitive hits that he got were spot on. He gave me a lot of confirmation, a lot of validation of some of the stuff that I'm thinking about, right? And so that was really positive. And it's like awesome, you know. And it's like you know, moving forward kind of energy, right? So I was so I was so happy and grateful for that, Matthew. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and uh, I was very grateful to be able to to do that for you because I, I respect you very much and I appreciate you having me on on your shows like this uh and having me kick off the new season I mean this is quite an honor so um and, and thank you for all your kind words about me uh at the beginning of the show I really really appreciate all of it thank you so much and thank you for everyone that's here um but yeah I'm excited about today's show yeah, um, let's talk about the, timelines. Timelines. It's a topic I, I really haven't dived much into over the years. It's just been um, a recent uh, thing that's been on my mind a lot. Um, and I really want to dive into it. So we're going to go into a lot of like, at, toward, at the beginning of the call here, I'm going to go into a lot of like theories, things I've received in channelings, books, etc. Just my conceptualization of time uh give people some metaphors about time and then we'll go into more uh, the practicality of like how you can actually um use this to you know better your life and to understand like just how to to play this earth game better so uh we're gonna make as i always do i always like to make sure that it, it is at least by the end very practical and down to earth but we're gonna get into some cool theories about things um i did watch the entire Back to the Future trilogy for about the 20th time yesterday and the day before, just to give myself inspiration. Mm -hmm. I know that's awesome. a movie, but it does present some interesting ideas about time. And it is my probably my favorite movie trilogy in creation is Back to the Future. Um, so we're going to talk about some interesting theories about time, some interesting evidence of time travel actually that's happened in the past. Um, and we're gonna talk about uh, just some models of reality and how time might work. So I guess I'll start out um, with, uh, let's talk about the idea of space time. And um, I, I very much have come to believe, and I do wanna say that, you know, I've been on this path of accumulating knowledge and trying to figure everything out I, i'm a, in a western astrology i'm a virgo moon so one of the characteristics of a virgo moon is i just i'm very inquisitive and i want i'm also a scorpio i want to find everything out like i just want to figure it all out so um as i go on in this journey of learning and teaching the one constant seems to be that everything is much more complex than it seems as I go on, it actually, the, in figuring everything out, I see that there's much more nuance, possibility, and complexity to everything. So it is sometimes hard to create perfect models of reality and perfect models of how life works because of these nuances. Um, so I do want to say that. And I do want to say that all of this is basically theory. I don't know how any of this can be proven. Um, and if you feel like you're on like a, a DMT trip while you're listening to me, don't worry about it. You're, you're fine. You're here. Okay. <laughs> but we're going to talk about some pretty trippy uh, uh, things. So the idea of space time, I do believe really, if we simplify space time, time is dependent on space. And if one model that we can look at is that imagine the earth being its own energetic container. And the idea of time as it is from a collective standpoint here on Earth is dependent on the space container that we're in on Earth. And that space container may change as you go through space. Okay, the space container, the, uh, the perception of time on Venus would be, I mean, for example, being on Venus, the, uh, the amount of time that it takes for Venus 
to go around the sun is going to be different. The, the perception of the length of days and nights is going to be different. So that in itself gives a certain a different perception of time. And really, when you boil it down, time is all about perception. It's an independent experience. And we know this for sure um, because of psychedelics. Um, and I know I talk about psychedelics a lot, but even, even um, cannabis. Um, I'm sure some of us on this call have smoked cannabis at least once in our lives. Um, and when you smoke cannabis, you might notice that your perception of time generally slows down a lot. The, the, at least that was all I don't smoke anymore. But when I used to, that was always my perception of reality. Everything would slow down. Okay. Um, I also recall a, um, a DMT experience I had about a decade ago in Mexico. And um, the shaman who was administering it to me, you know, I, I was out, I was having my experience. And I thought I was in there for about nine hours. And when I woke up, I, I, he's like, how long do you think that was? I'm like, I don't know, eight, nine hours. He said it was 20 minutes. You know, and, and that's, that's proof in the pudding that one of the aspects of time is based on individual perception, is based on whatever our point of perception being as this you know, physical creation here on the earth, it changes. And really just uh, even without the use of, of herbs or substances, um, when you're having fun, time flies, when you're bored, right? I mean, I, I'm someone who's who used to work. I mean, I'm very blessed to not have to do anything else for a living besides this, but I used to do a lot of other things for a living. I used to work at like pizza shops and oh man, does the time crawl by, you know, when you're working a job, you know, yeah, put in the chat if you, ever, if you know what I'm talking about, about working a job that you really don't like and how you're constantly looking at the clock and it feels like forever, right? But then you go out that night with your friends, go to the bar, have some fun and it's like that, right? So um, that alone, like those examples are kind of proof that uh, time is something very perceptual and also meditation meditation can off is one of the best ways that we have to open up the vertical um kind of if we imagine linear time being a hor the horizontal uh, excuse my uh not good remembrance of math but that's the y-axis <laughs> Someone tell me which is why, which is X. I should remember this. I literally was doing calculus in high school. I was way ahead of my. The rest I'm of older my than career, you, so I'm, I don't that's remember excuse. whatever the Y axis. I think this is the Y axis. This is the X. Someone remind me. Then the Z would be the third dimension. There's an but, X um, and a Y. Yeah, that's all. I, that's all I know. Yeah, There's an X yeah. axis and a Y axis. <laughs> but if we imagine, if we imagine the the horizontal being uh, the the linear time that is um, is perceived. And then the, um, the vertical would be the opportunity to step out of that and enter into the quote vertical dimension of time, which really is available through the present moment. And in that we can step out of that. Imagine that you're able to actually rise above that, that line and actually affect uh, the past and, and the future through meditation. That's one of the powers that we have of manifestation is to step out of that, that linear time kind of um it's like we're stuck on a treadmill and to step out of that treadmill momentarily in meditation or visualization and project ourselves into the future to create a future that we want or to project ourselves into the past to do some healing work and some reconciliation work with our own memories of the past and it's of course and even memory is a very individual experience you know mm -hmm. there's studies that show that um you know, 40 people witness an event and they all have different recollections of it yeah. because their perceptual point is different, right? And that's another kind of proof that time is something that's very much perceptual. Um, another thing is like, uh, think, uh, think about if you just have memories, any memories of like when you were really young, like five, six, seven, eight, even like nine or 10, at least I remember it like summer days lasted forever because you were very present. You're very present. It was like morning lasts forever, afternoon lasts forever, evening lasts forever, and then you go to bed. Whereas as an adult, oftentimes it seems like time just goes like that, right? Because yeah. we're working, 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 getting things on, taking care of responsibilities, right? And that's just another thing. And please, people, put in the chat if you, if you kind of resonate with that. 
you know, um, do you remember as a kid, your perception of time being different than it is now? Um, you know, when, when uh, you know, you, you make love, like when, when two people make love, again, the perception of time seems to slow very much down, right? For any of you who have ever played sports, um, I played a lot of sports. And when you're focused in the present moment, your perception of time becomes so slow, you can literally see every tick on the clock, you know, counting down. Um, and it's just, that's all proof about the perception uh, kind of phenomenon where the perception of time changes things. So that's one aspect. Now, space time, I started talking about space time being containers. And really, if we want to uh, take that as the macro and then take our individual experience of time as a micro experience, we're all having our, our it's like we're all in our individual space time bubbles. Yeah. And one of the concepts I'm going to talk about a little bit later on is imagine your timeline being like a bubble that is kind of floating through the collective timelines and creating something on its own, but yet being influenced um, by the uh, by the outside. Is there any way we could, we could turn off Stella's video? It's just, she's walking and it's a bit distracting. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, so it <laughs> uh, looks like she's walking through Walmart or something. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, space time. So for example, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do in my work, and we've talked about some of this on some of my other shows here are the Starseed discovery sessions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Joseph did one with me, uh, I think a number of, um, you know, of, of our clients here have done it. And yeah. um, on the, in the Starseed Discovery session, what I'm doing, I'm guiding someone through the astral plane. Uh, they lie down, I'm putting them under kind of a, a trance hypnosis, and I'm guiding them through the astral plane to their home planet or place of origin. And it's interesting to kind of get a, a glimpse into time and how time, um, the relevance of time from another place in space time. And it's definitely quite different. Um, very often for, you know, for clients that are very much connected um, during the Starseed Discovery Session, I kind of, um, I become a, a galactic researcher and I start asking questions through them and having them be a channel and I get really, really valuable information. And very, I find very often when someone is really, really super connected and we ask about time, it turns out that their self, their extraterrestrial self that's um, on another place is also in another time. And that other time is generally in the future compared to here. Mm -hmm. So as star seeds, generally we come from what to us would be the future. Okay. But yet on, uh, on these other planets, looking from their own kind of specific space time container, they can jump into whatever parts of the timeline here that they want to. Right. So star seeds, um, as, and, and that, that's also the same for the earth soul. And really it's my belief that the earth soul is created from the extraterrestrial soul. If you're a star seed, if you're an earth seed and you could be one or the other, if you're an earth seed, there's, it's a little bit more simplified and the earth soul has come up through the planet animal kingdoms through um, just constant reincarnation in order to gain experience, in order to gain photonic light, the toroidal field around and to gain more photonic light, which allows for more complex experiences like being a third dimensional human. Mm -hmm. So, but if you're an extraterrestrial soul, which many of us on this call are, you, um, you projected yourself through a technology that's available on some of these higher dimensional realms and these higher dimensional planets, to the earth and then that becomes the earth soul as i warned before it can become much more complex than that though because there can be several different extraterrestrial souls working through your earth soul you and the physical body could have several different earth souls with all sorts of extraterrestrial soul connections working through you it's not necessarily a linear kind of step mm -hmm. down process it can be but it's not always so the perception of time to bring this back to time um, from these uh, from these other places is very much dependent on space time and uh, a great model that I downloaded uh, just in my own consciousness of space time is imagine um, you're walking on a high school football field and there's like a science fair going on and there's thousands of these dioramas 
And each of these dioramas is depicting a different planet or a different star system. And I'm really not sure if the space-time kind of bubble is simply over a planet or perhaps over a star, a star system, mm -hmm. because that's another possibility. But either way, imagine that there's dioramas with planets or star systems, and you can walk through the football field. You're kind of now independent of time walking through the football field. But once you go in and start exploring and, and studying a diorama close up, all of a sudden now you're in that particular mm -hmm. space-time continuum. And this also would be a good theory that kind of explains the idea of wormholes. Because imagine a wormhole is as simple as you're just walking metaphorically between each of these dioramas on the football field and you're going from Earth to Sirius to the Andromeda galaxy to the Lyran star system to Orion's belt to whatever. And just as the space time kind of container is different, it's also possible to enter wormholes between them through directed intention. Um, that, that's one possibility of kind of how really rapid uh, space time travel can occur. Um, so that's another model to keep in mind is the idea of space time. Now, um, when a couple weeks ago, so I wanna bring this up a couple weeks ago, um, as I said, I, I was talking about the Starseed sessions um i had a really uh, i had a client that went really really deep into uh at syria into the syrians uh she was i'm also a syrian starseed um i know there's a lot of syrian starseeds on this call um but my client was a syrian starseed and she was really really deeply connected so um i was kind of uh fishing for some information about uh how reality works from the syrian perspective and we got some pretty cool stuff about um how basically they can look from the future and look at these holographic diagrams and see the different layered timelines playing out on Earth. And this, this is kind of an indication of the idea of multiple timelines playing out right now here on Earth, multiple collective timelines where reality is happening a bit, happening a bit differently. And they can kind of see themselves or their, their associates who are star seeds kind of the work they're doing, where they are in these collective timelines, which are kind of layered. And the model that I came up with based off of that is, um, I think I actually came up with it before, but lasagna. Time is like lasagna. So I'm sure my fellow Italians, I'm <laughs> some very small percentage of Italian, but I'm sure my Italians will like this, um, that uh, timelines are like lasagna and they're layered. They're layered and just like uh, lasagna, you know, the, the the tomato sauce bleeds into the cheese, bleeds into the, the pasta, you know, it all kind of bleeds into each other. And sometimes what happens is these overlaying timelines will bleed into each other a bit. And you, I believe it's possible to actually unknowingly be jumping back and forth between subtle mm -hmm. distinction of timelines. Yet I think there's also major different uh, there's also major differences in timelines that we don't necessarily make that jump to. Now, who here on this call, um, give me a, a sh give us a shot in the chat. Has heard of the Mandela effect? I think Libra, I see Libra. Like have. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, hi, Teresa. So um, the idea of the uh, the Mandela effect is that there's a lot of weird things that people who are like above the age of 25 remember from the past that are not actually as we remember them and some real basic examples and please like in the chat like uh if you have an example of the mandela effect please share it with everyone uh one of the the ones that really bothers me is kit kat bars i you know i ate candy when i was a teenager and uh, i distinctly remember it being kit dash cat and in the chat like let me know if you remember that too and Alara, you too. I know you grew up in Canada where you had Kit Kat bars, I right? love Kit Kat, but I don't remember that at, at all. You don't remember the dash? No. See, that's really interesting. No. <laughs> and that might be there be evidence of, of different timelines, right? A couple people are saying, yes, they remember the dash, right? Um, you know, do, do people remember Looney Tunes being T-O-O-N-S or T-U-N-E-S, right? I, I remember it being T-O-O-N-S, but it's yeah. actually T-U-N-E-S. <laughs> right right yeah judy remembers the dash yeah okay um 
do we remember the Monopoly man with a monocle or not? I certainly do. Yeah. Like I play Monopoly with my friends and parents as a kid, but he has no monocle. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, who here, you know, um, purchased, uh, I know, I think maybe it was more, actually, I don't know, maybe it was unisex, but um, Fruit of the Loom. Yeah, I guess Fruit of the Loom was unisex, but um, I was going to say, I, I thought it was more of a, like a, athletic brand but no it was a unisex uh brand for everything through the loom the uh the the symbol for the the logo um i remember being a, a capricorn with fruit coming out but that never existed does anyone else remember that no no I'm, i remember I like grapes or berries or something like that yeah yeah coming out of a capricorn but no oh you don't remember it out of a capricorn no hmm okay I mean, like, you know, like I said, I'm from Canada, so maybe they did different stuff in Canada. Cornucopia. Sorry, Teresa. I don't know what I'm talking about. Cornucopia. <laughs> what did I say? I said Capricorn. Capricorn. Oh, that's, yeah. I said it's on the accent. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Cornucopia. <laughs> yes. So uh, you don't, but Alara, you don't remember the, the no. Cornucopia? No. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, sex and the city or sex in the city? Because a lot of people remember it started as sex in the city, but it's sex and the city. Right. That's another interesting one to think about. And really, the reason it's called Mandela effect is because a lot of people thought they remembered Man uh, Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the early 1990s. But yet he actually died in 2012, I believe. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look that up. Does anyone have a memory of Nelson Mandela dying in, in the early 1990s? But that's what it's named after. That's the Mandela effect. Uh, that's what it's named after. I thought, a uh, 2013, thank you. I believe I have that memory of Mandela passing away in the 90s. I do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, you know, I guess it's not proof of anything necessarily, but it's really interesting because, I mean, there's billions of people that kind of have either the same mass delusions or there's something else going on with time. And if anyone else has another cool example of the Mandela effect, I know there's a lot more. Yeah, okay, Mandela effect, Caroline says for Queen song, we are the champion, yeah. So um, most everyone remembers, you know, it ending, that's the Queen song ending, we are the champions of the world, but they don't say that. It's just, we are the champions. Uh, Forrest Gump, most people remember, life is like a box of chocolates, mama said. But she said, he said, life, was like a box of chocolates and you know uh, and uh, star wars luke i am your father was never said <laughs> uh, i forgot what what is the actual line someone type it in the chat um most everyone thinks it's luke i am your father but it's actually something slightly different oh wow so these are just interesting examples and yeah if anyone else thinks of another one please type in the chat i i i love these um you know, the other one is that movie Shazam by Sinbad that never actually existed. But myself and many, many, many people seem to recall a movie in the 90s uh, about a genie that was before Shaq's Kazam that was by Sinbad, the comedian, uh, where he played a genie. And like people literally like remember the plot. Yeah, I am your father. Oh, he just so Darth Vader just says, I am your father. He never says, Luke, I am your father. Mm -hmm. Right. OK. Yeah. And someone brought up the Berenstein Bears. Let me go in the chat. Um, someone said uh, the Berenstein Bears. Yeah, that it's uh, it, it's spelled a bit differently. Right. Right. Um, yeah. If anyone else. Uh, oh, and Andrea remembers the Sinbad movie. Right. And like these are just little things. Right but they're perhaps evidence of bleeding timelines, of parallel timelines, which I do believe is a thing. Now I'm gonna um, share something. A lot of this is based off of, uh, the, there's a wonderful channeled book. There's a series of books by uh, an amazing guy called Todd Deviney, D-E-V-I-N-E-Y. I think I've talked about this in other shows, uh, these books, but uh, really these books explain just amazing things from kind of a quantum physics perspective about creation, about time, about the karma, the toroidal fields, you know, reincarnation, ascension, all that. Uh, expansion for ascending consciousness. And actually um, on my YouTube channel um, coming up uh, this autumn, I'm going to be doing a, uh, an interview with uh, Mr. Deviney. So 
I'm very excited for that. Um, I'm going to share my interpretation of his, his channeled interpretation of how timelines work um, and uh, parallel realities. And um, I, this is my interpretation. I can't wait to talk to Todd about it because I'm sure I'm not grasping it fully. This stuff, when you read this book, it's like, whoa. And it's, it's, it's even over my head. It's over everyone's head because um, it's coming from an extraterrestrial source. But um, the idea of parallel realities is a very real thing. But here's kind of the rule. You can go back in time and experience parallel realities as a soul. So the soul can put itself in different versions of time periods. So um, just like in uh, who, who's watched Back to the Future, uh, the trilogy? Give me in the chat if you've watched Back to the Future. Libra's watched it. Alari, have you seen Back to the Future? I have a long okay. time ago, Reese but yes. Seen it? Okay. You know how um, in, in Back to the Future 2, when, you know, Biff gives himself the sports almanac in 1955, and then when they get back to 1985, they're in this horrible reality where Biff, Biff Tannen has taken over the world, right? Um, and, uh, you know, they go back to Doc's shop, and um, he's, you know, he's drawing on the whiteboard. And he's saying, this is the time when we were on 1985. And then, but what happened is something happened. We branched off and we're now in an alternate timeline, 1985A, reality for everyone else. But, you know, this is hell for you and me and Einstein, his dog, right? So the, uh, that's the idea basically off of uh, how with time travel, one could seriously alter timelines. But that's a theory that may not actually kind of hold up um, based on what I've learned from these books and challenges, all that, I'm not so sure it's that simple. I believe that you can go back, you as a soul, you can plant yourself in during the reincarnation process in any alternate timeline that you'd like. And I do have evidence of this. Well, as much evidence as you could have for something as, you know, as esoteric as this, but, um, I had a client that when we did a past life regression, I, I've been, this happened with two clients. Um, uh, my client, Jose, I'm, uh, he's, he's okay with me sharing, but um, we saw him, he was like, um, I think I shared this in my other, in my last uh, uh, show with you, but he was like a, an olive farmer. He was making olive oil and, or, and, and he had a winery and he was this very rich, wealthy man. Um, but it was in an alternate, timeline it we we kind of trace the timeline and the timeline doesn't exist anymore so what happens is these past timelines and this is kind of what i believe my interpretation of what's explained in todd divine's book in book one is that imagine there's these multiple timelines but then it'll hit a point a convergence point where a dominant timeline will settle and then that will create a new river and then from that river alternate collective timelines can branch out i should have i should have a whiteboard or something so i could draw like doc brown but um basically just imagine it's like there's all these lines all these different i, I can <laughs> i can find them yeah hold on okay awesome okay show and tell show and tell so there's all these different lines okay and these are all um does it show up yeah Okay, so these are all kind of possibilities of timelines. Then we have a major world event. And this is the major world event. And out of that major world event, we then have a dominant timeline. And now these timelines are no longer really going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then now we have a new dominant timeline. And then there's all these alternate timelines that can create it out of that until the next major world event happens. And then the same thing starts over again. Then we get a dominant timeline. So basically you can go back as a soul and you can, um, you can experience different possibilities of different time periods. Okay. Just fix my camera. For example, you can, you know, you could go back to the Victorian times or the me medieval times and experience different um, versions of it, like vastly different versions of it that didn't 
happen in our history books. And I, I, pro I wouldn't say, you know, vastly different, like, you know, there were aliens uh, on the planet or, yeah. or the Industrial Revolution happened a thousand years earlier or anything like that, but thousand years, 500 years early. But what, um, what you might experience is real differences in what actually happened in the history books. But then yet there's a major convergence point. And then from that convergence point, you get kind of a new dominant timeline. So you can go back in the past as a soul and experience different possibilities, yet you can't change the future. Mm -hmm. you can't, there can't be a major change to the future timelines because those future timelines looking from a quantum perspective or from a future perspective are already set in stone. And I, I, the more I played around with this theory, I, it's a bit hard to grasp. And I'd love to get some feedback from people in the chat. Like, what, what are you all feeling about this theory? But I do feel that this is probably accurate. Um, and so then when we talk about time travel, you know, I, I'm sure time travel is real. I, I mean, I think we have pretty much close to 100% proof of it being real because um, there's a book called The Montauk Project by, did I write down the author? Preston Nichols and Peter Moon. Um, oh, by the way, someone, uh, when we're, I'm talking about books and authors, someone in the chat I know had said, like, can we type in the name of that book? It's Expansion for Ascend, if, if maybe if Laura, you want to type in it, it's Expansion for Ascending Consciousness mm -hmm. by Todd R. Deviney, D E V I N E Y. So that's that book. And then this other book I'm talking about, which I have not read, but I've read summaries on uh, the internet of the Montauk Project. The Montauk, the book is the Montauk Project by Preston Nichols. So apparently, um, out in Long Island, um, on Montauk, I'm from I'm from Long Island, but not even for those of you who don't know New York City area, uh, Long Island. Montauk is way, way, way at the end of the island. It's like two hours from New York City. Okay, it's it's not even close to New York City, but it's where very, very wealthy people live. Um, there's a lot of very, very wealthy houses on the Atlantic Ocean out in Montauk Point. Um, great lobstering place as well. Great, great fishing out there. But um, in the 1970s, apparently there was a, um, a secret government uh, facility out in Montauk that, that was later shut down. And they were doing all sorts of weird experiments with extraterrestrial technology. Uh, one of the things that supposedly was that they, um, you know, had this kind of chamber where someone could sit in and manifest things instantly. They were playing with instant manifestation and people would like be creating like demonic monsters or be creating like money or wealth or whatever out of nowhere. Um, and this was uh, extraterrestrial technology that really speeds up, you know, manifestation. It kind of takes away the manifestation lag uh, that we experience in our reality. And then another thing is that they were creating time portals where um, a, a, where they had like a time tunnel where they could travel to anywhere in time or space, basically creating a wormhole. So supposedly, yes, this was created. We This has already happened where um, they have experimented with time travel. Um, apparently, they made contact with extraterrestrials through these time tunnels. Um, they were working with extraterrestrial technology. Um, and, uh, supposedly, uh, there was a project called the rainbow project in 1943. That was kind of the first, um, foray of the secret government into time travel. And I'll just read off of Wikipedia. I don't really understand this fully. I, I heard a while ago them talking about this on coast to coast AM. It's fascinating, but uh, on or about August 12, 1983, the time travel project at Camp Hero interlocked in hyperspace with the original Rainbow Project back in 1943. The USS Eldridge was drawn into hyperspace and trapped there. Two men, Al Bielik and Duncan Cameron, both claimed to have leaped from the deck of the USS Eldridge, um, where they entered into hyperspace and ended up after a period of severe disorientation at Camp Hero in the year 1983. Here they claimed, so basically they jumped off of the boat in 1943 and landed in 1983. Here they claim to have met John von Neumann, a famous physicist and mathematician, even though he was known to have died in 1957. So this is, you know, weird. Um, obviously yeah. kind of a indication of exploring different alternate realities. 
different alternate yeah. timelines within the construct. But I don't believe, and I, I could be wrong on all this, but I don't believe that there's anything that any secret government or whatever could do as far as time travel to seriously alter the course of the future um, by going back into the past. Like that's the idea of the butterfly effect. The, the, the idea of the butterfly effect is that anything you do when you, when you time travel into the past, like in a time machine or through a wormhole or whatever, will affect everything else and it will create a ripple effect that vastly changes reality. But that may not be the case. It may just be an idea of alternate timelines. And yet there's still being a, a dominant, several dominant timelines that people, I think the idea of when we have these um, layered timelines like lasagna, I believe that what's happening is that there's enough collective focus into these layered timelines to make them a physical mm -hmm. Now, of course, all of reality is holographic in a sense but to make them a physical collective game or manifestation. Whereas this is another aspect of this whole thing is any, you know, um, we reach choice points. I think we make 95,000 choices a day and most of them are very, very minor. Okay. It's, you know, when to take a, a sip out of your cup or what to wear, or, you know, it's all minor stuff, but um, ultimately, you know, we all do encounter major choice points along our life journey. And I absolutely believe that there are versions of ourselves that took those different choice points and are living out an alternate reality. And some I, that happens to me a lot where yeah. I often just feel like I'm daydreaming behind the scenes and living out an alternate reality. It happens to me all the time. Also in the dream world, we're living out alternate realities where we make different choices in the dream world that we don't make in the physical body. I believe that one of the ways that, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do in my work is to uh, kind of work out, help people to understand their soul contracts. You know, what, what happened in a past life between two souls that are, is creating kind of the playing field or the environment in this lifetime um, that'll cause certain tendencies, certain uh, ways that people interact with one another. And I believe that one of the ways that souls work out uh, soul contracts is through alternate realities in the dream space. And so um, if you've ever had the experience, and I'm sure we've all had this, of in the dream space, something different happening with a very important character in your life, whether it be a partner, ex-partner, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your best friend something different happens that didn't happen in this waking reality. And it, it can sometimes be repetitive. You'll have repetitive dreams right. where you're, something is happening with a, an important character in your life that is not happening in physical reality. And what's happening, I believe, I see Libra nodding. Yeah. What's happening, I believe, is that um, you're, the two souls are working out the soul contract in a way through alternate realities, so things, so one thing will happen on the earth, but the other possibilities, see, soul contracts are not as easy as just um, this, 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 and then the contract ends. A soul contract is more like if, if this happens, then this, if this happens, then this, a soul contract is full of possibilities, possible timelines. That's why when people ask me about a relationship they're in, they're like, you know, well, is a soul contract over, soul contract not? Sometimes I'll take a look and it's like, yeah, you know, the soul contract's definitely over. You guys are going to, you know, um, separate and, and you'll, that's pretty much it. Sometimes, you know, it's okay. It goes into a different um, kind of version of the relationship or sometimes very often, more often than not, there's options. There's options in the soul contract. There's an option to stay together. There's an option to break up and come back. There's an option to just break up. And that's kind of how soul contracts are. It's possibilities. It's not something set in stone. It's possibilities based off of karma, based off of experience from other lifetimes that those two souls have had between each other and the individual karma and the ancestral karma basically are causing a template of what each soul has to learn individually along their ascension journey. And then through the um, just the incredible um, way that souls plan things out almost perfectly 
They'll plan out a very specific soul contract, but with possibilities. So some of the possibilities that don't occur in the physical world might happen in the astral world, and they might be accessed during dream space. Okay, um, so that's a that's a uh, uh, kind of example of um, parallel timelines in a more micro sense based on our individual um, paths. And the way I see it is like every possible decision that you could make is creating a new timeline. And if you imagine that's just creating infinite timelines and it actually ends up being a sphere because then it's, it, it's now a quantum third dimensional thing. So it's no longer just layered timelines in a linear 2D sense. It's now become a sphere of all these possibilities. And basically wherever the most energy is, is where you, so imagine the most energy is right in the middle of this sphere. I'm getting a whiteboard next time I'm teaching. Okay. Uh, imagine this is the sphere. This includes all the possible timelines right in the middle here. That's where the most energy is. That's where the most energy is focused. And that's what's manifesting on the physical earth. And we can relate the law of attraction to that. And that's going to be based on your choices, which have a lot to do with your subconscious mind, which has to do with your personal history, your karmic history, your ancestral history. Okay. And all of this is just other possibilities that are parallel timelines that happen based on different choice points that you make. Right. But you're the, basically the, the, the timeline that has the most energy is what you're actually living. And then we could spread that out. Imagine you're taking out that little ball inside the bigger sphere and you're spreading it out, you know, artificially into a two-dimensional timeline. And then that's the experience of linear time that we're going down where, you know, tomorrow's Wednesday, the next day is Thursday. And we're having that perceptual experience of that. Right. Whereas think about in the dream world, you're more kind of out in the ethers in, in this kind of, you know, the, the outside parts of your potentialities, you know, these are, this is all potential energy from, for, from a physics standpoint, this is kinetic energy. And it's their astral experiences. And they might not even ever happen in the dream world. They could just be a possibility you can think of. If you can think of a possibility that can happen in your life, that is a parallel timeline, an astral timeline. But there's just not enough energy for it to necessarily manifest in the physical. So let's talk a little bit about manifestation. Let's say you really want to manifest something in your life. So what you want to do, you want to magnetize it towards the center so it actually ends up being a physical manifestation, a physical reality. How do you do that? You, you work with your subconscious mind, okay? Because the subconscious mind is really what's, you know, the law of attraction isn't going off of your conscious mind usually. The conscious mind can override it a bit to create some things here and there. But really the subconscious mind is creating 95% uh, of your reality, as Dr. Joe Spenza says, or, or maybe even more, right? So we really want to go in and, and work with the subconscious, and that can be with meditation, but especially hypnosis, subliminals, okay? Um, those are the best ways to work with the subconscious mind. Affirmations are great when we repeat them. Also changing our speech, because everything that comes out of our mouth, our subconscious mind hears, and it becomes this repetitive cycle. So the subconscious mind is, is, has a paradigm, like someone who has, you know, um, wealth problems. And, and I want to say, like, I understand, like, some people come from poverty, and there, there's a lot of forces against them, right? But it's still possible to get out of poverty for anyone, even if someone's, you know, living in, in a very bad place in third world country, there are one or two people that will come out of that village somehow and make their way to the Western world and accumulate wealth, right? But there are forces that work against people. That's why law of attraction is not as simple as some of the law of attraction gurus on YouTube, you know, um, say it is. It's not just, you know, thinking it will come necessarily. It's about the subconscious mind, which is this hardened thing that was created by the time you're seven, you're basically, your subconscious mind is pretty much set in stone for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. That's pretty crazy to think about because when you're 34, like me, or you're 80, like you, someone else, like you're still going off of the same mind that was set when you were seven, right? And that's why, as you know, for anyone who is a parent of a young child or going to be a parent of a young child, you have to be really, really careful of every word that comes out of your mouth around a young child. You have to be really careful of what sort of television or internet 
or video games are exposed in that critical period up to the age of seven because it will get in their subconscious and if they're watching fearful things on television there will be fear if they're watching angry or violent things on television there can be anger you know that comes out of that later in their life if the parents are fighting each other you know, there's strife and there's division and anger that's that's then in the subconscious field that they'll manifest unconsciously throughout their entire life through usually through relationships, right? So if we want to really create that um, that timeline that what we want to do, we have to put energy into it. And the best way we can put energy into it is working with the subconscious mind, meditation, okay, uh, repeated affirmations in order for them to work have to be repeated daily for a while, okay? But, and also just our speech. And one of the, um, in the special offer package, one of my courses is called Change Your Reality by Changing Your Words, where I really talk about the importance of words and how certain words um, can unknowingly kind of hold us back or move us forward. And we really want to, um, as best we can, just basically the number one rule is to stop complaining. That's the number one rule. You, <laughs> to simplify it, if you want to manifest something better, stop complaining that's the first step and then put energy into magnetizing it through visualization meditation also you know for uh those of you who do things like candle magic which i'm a big fan of candle magic you can magnetize things to you through candle magic it's like hacking into the universal field to to magnetize something quicker and actually one of my courses in uh the packages will will be pitching is uh intro to candle magic it's a, a one and a half hour course uh, that really tells you how to do everything safely and wisely and, you know, make sure you're, you're doing everything right. Uh, and you can actually work with that to enhance your law of attraction practice. So one other thing I want to mention before we maybe, uh, you know, go into questions and all that, but um, like we were talking before about the idea of, you know, as a, uh, a soul, you can kind of go into alternate timeline. And I do believe that now this is another phenomenon. A lot of us, believe it like there's the doppelganger phenomena first of all mm -hmm. uh let me know if in the chat if anyone's ever said that they saw a doppelganger of you because i had a client in in scotland who saw a doppelganger of me libra says yes and i i don't know about that i mean that's really bizarre to think about right the doppelganger syndrome but that either it's coincidence april says yes or it could be kind of a uh evidence of bleeding realities right um cindy says yes in high school i do believe like one of the possible complexities and nuances of the soul's experience is being in more than one body at once in the same timeline this has been confirmed many times through my past life regression sessions with clients where we'll see one uh timeline where they're alive in the 1940s and then we see another one where they're in a different body in the same time period and it's like from the linear mind you think well that's not possible because don't you just go and then reincarnate go and reincarnate it's not that simple there's much more of a complexity to this and it's possible that the soul can have different bodies and different percentages of that soul's essence can be projected into different bodies there's also as i said the possibility that different souls are projected into your own essence there's also the possibility perhaps of the doppelganger effect or the bilocal effect where perhaps unknowingly you yourself are operating in different timelines wow. that one i'm not so sure about that one sounds a little bit nuts but if you think about back to the future think about how many doc browns are there there's a lot there's doc brown 1985 there's doc brown 1885 that's where i was watching and if anyone wants to comment right now i was watching back to the future uh two and three before the fish tank exploded as i told alara <laughs> but uh, uh we got to clean up but um back at the end of uh back to the future too you know doc un unknowing like w w unintentionally ends up back in 1885 but there's a perfectly good doc in 1955 that could have just lived his life out to 1985 why did they want to go back i know if they didn't there would be no reason for back to the future three but <laughs> why did they want to go back and save Doc from 1885 of dying, because if he had died, then wouldn't that mean that the timeline was correct because Doc in 1955 was still there. But anyways, that movie, if you try to draw it out, it's pretty confusing. There's all sorts of different Doc Browns and different alternative timelines. Um, there's all sorts of different Marty McFly's and different, and Biff Tannen's and different timelines. And that is a possibility, I think. I'm not so sure about that, but I think it is possible that even unknown 
knowingly, we could be operating in more than one timeline at once. And it may just be a matter of our focus, right? So our, it, this is your point of focus. My point of focus is through my eyes. So this is my reality here. And there's little nuances of slipping in and out of other realities through the dream world, through daydreaming, through meditation, visualization, all that, right? But in general, I'm on this one timeline and you're on this timeline with me and everyone's on this timeline with me, right, on this call. But I think it's possible there's a me in a slightly altered timeline mm -hmm. that my soul is also putting energy into. It's a slightly different collective timeline. That's possible. I'm not sure about that. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention before we get to, um, to questions and all that is the idea of your creating your bubble and how that relates. Actually, this is a great topic, how this relates to what's going on now in the world, because no one knows what the hell is going on right now. Really? I don't, I think I know, I really don't know. Are vaccines good or vaccines bad? I don't know. Uh, is, you know, what's going on with this world? Like, there's a lot of different possibilities, a lot of different information on either sides. And one of the things that was shown in this really great um, starseed session that uh, my client had a couple of weeks ago was the idea of the collective timelines that are being manifested within the greater. So imagine there's this, this is another level of it, but imagine there is this, let's say we're in 2021A. Okay, right now, maybe there's a 2021B, a 2021C, et cetera, okay? But let's just focus on 2021A. Now, within 2021A, there's these bubbles of collective timelines that are created through collective belief systems. And I do believe that, you know, I talked before about the idea of being able to go back in the past as a soul, but yet not being able to change the future in a major way from the past, like, for example, you know, the idea is like, could Hitler have been stopped, for example, like, and I think that's mentioned in the expansion for ascending consciousness. And the answer is probably no, because that was a set kind of um, history point that created the uh, a new kind of set in stone collective timeline that could then branch from there. I do believe Y2K may have been a one of those points where we had the timelines kind of solidify for a bit. I think it may happen more often now. I think that it happened in 2012, at the end of the Mayan calendar. I think it happened with COVID. And I also think it happened with 9-11. 9-11, Y2K, it, it probably was 9-11, and they're so close to one another. Maybe it was both. But I think that um, we're kind of at one of those points again, where there's all these stacked timelines, but we're kind of creating, now we're, we've moved into the new one. And this may be why the Mandela effect stuff we see more of it like coming up over the years, like the sex in the city one is pretty new, but the Shazam one people knew about 15 years ago. I was listening to coast to coast AM at three o'clock in the morning, 15 years ago about the Mandela effect that, but there's new ones that come up. So that may be evidence of that. But anyways, in let's say within 2021 a there's collective timelines being creative of collective groups based on their experience of COVID time. Some people's experience of COVID time is, um, you know, they, they're just following the party line of, of what the, what, you know, the health authorities are saying and just taking their vaccines and they feel great. They're going about their daily life. Nothing has really changed for them. Some people have, you know, fought against and decided not to take it. And, you know, some of them got COVID and, and passed away. Some of them got COVID and got long-term consequences. Some of them have been fine. Some of them have just been living their life normally. No, no mask, no um, you know, no vaccine, whatever, and nothing has happened to them. And there's all these spaces in between, and there's all these groups around the world. It's also dependent on the experience of the country. It's it, our experience in America is different than experience in India, which is different than experience in Australia. I mean, in Australia, there's a lot of these themes of like violence coming from the police and from the state, right? Violently forcing people to do things where America, it's more through coercion right? In Europe, it's more th through kind of a mix of both. And that's why there's been these mass protests in Paris and Berlin and London. And America really hasn't seen it as much. It's been more kind of coercive, like we're asking you, we're making subtle laws, but we're not forcing you. In Australia, it's like we're forcing you. And it's, so it's like there's all these different collective timelines that are created off of collective belief systems. And there's no actual right or wrong here. And I know that some people might think this is crazy, 
but just be open-minded. There's no right or wrong, whether you get the vaccine or don't. There's no right or wrong in this experience. It's just different collective realities that are playing out. And it's kind of previewing a grander separation in timelines between what I would call like the 5D and the 5G timeline, um, the uh, a more organic ascension timeline versus a more kind of inorganic timeline that is more um, filled with technology in a way that is suppressive as opposed to in the more organic timeline in a way that technology is actually uh, freeing in a way. <laughs> and because we're in the 20 year age between Jupiter with Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius, which is the age of AI, it's the age of technology. And thus during this 20 year time, we'll really see those collective timelines play out where one is kind of somewhat clear, we'll see one is the path more towards ascension and using technology to pause a thing. One is kind of like descension in a way, it's almost an opposite spiral where the, there's, an, there's artificial things, artificial technologies suppressing that sort of uh, thing. That's, you know, there's people in the spiritual community that have fears of like, oh, you know, the, the, the vaccines, if people take them, um, you know, they're going to get, uh, th their ascension will stop. And that's just not true. It, it's not true at all. It's not even close to being true. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's, a, it's an, an experience that's very individual, and it's very much based off of the subconscious mind very much based off of the subconscious beliefs now that doesn't mean that you can say well i can you know just believe that i'll be totally fine and i'll never get covid and whatever it doesn't mean you won't there's been a lot of people especially like republican lawmakers in the u.s there's been a whole handful of them that told everyone covid was fake or don't get the vaccine or whatever they end up they died right they died from covid there's also been a lot of people who have been just fine it's it's not as easy as what's in the conscious mind and what you consciously believe or want to have it. It goes down into the subconscious, but you might not even know what's there. Okay. The easiest way to access the subconscious, if you really want to kind of understand it better, uh, is through a really good astrology reading mm -hmm. because your birth chart can hold clues to what's going on in the subconscious and the unconscious even because the unconscious relates to the past life karma. So basically, uh, kind of the vision that my client was seeing from the Assyrian planet was all these collective timelines. They're like bumping with each other, fighting for dominance. And these are collective belief systems. Obviously, there's a paradigm or rhetoric that the mass media is pushing forth that you shall not question anything. You shall not question anything. Just listen to us. Take the vaccine. Don't take ivermectin, et cetera. However... There's all sort. There's a, a, there's other that are like everything's evil. It's all evil. The vaccines will kill you. It'll stop your sense or whatever. And then there's all these shades in between, and there's all these collective timelines. And what'll happen over the next twenty years is there'll be more major events likely on the planet that will illustrate these these splitting timelines based off of collective subconscious beliefs and collective experiences and collective conscious beliefs as well. And we'll start to more clearly see that split. And I do believe like 15, 20 years from now, we really see a kind of split society where it almost does look like two Earths, where there's the more Atlantean and there's nothing wrong with Atlantis. Like Atlantis is beautiful, but the dark side of Atlantis, which is kind of what China look, Beijing looks like, it's a lot of control and surveillance, okay? and uh, just you know, infiltration of people's individual liberties being played out in bigger cities and more of a Lemurian timeline experience playing out in the communities outside of the cities where people more and more are gonna be moving from cities into these new earth communities. And I think 20 years from now, that's kind of how life's gonna work. It's gonna be a big difference. Absolutely, I think 20 years from now, you're gonna be in New York City or Chicago. I think almost everyone will have a microchip right here They'll go into the store, they'll scan it, you know, they'll pay for their stuff. They want to go into their apartment, they'll scan their wrist, you know, and they go upstairs. Uh, and a lot of people will love it. A lot of people will have no problem with it. And the idea of subconscious beliefs creating collective timelines, maybe, I mean, what's, who's to blame them? 
really, I mean, maybe that's just the way they want to live and it's not harmful to their ascension, right? And yet there'll be other people who, who you know, avoid that, push against that, which is fine too. I might, you know, be one of those people who wants to be more out in the Lemurian kind of style yeah. communities and yeah. living, you know, growing our own food, you know, doing our own education together, sitting around a fire, channeling light language to one another. Like that sounds like, you know, <laughs> kind of heaven on earth for me and a lot of people on this call. But I think we really see those separating timelines. And the idea of your own, just last thing, your own collective bubble. Your co imagine there's a bubble around you right now. And this bubble is moving laterally, moving forward through whatever collective timeline you happen to be in. Let's call this 2021A, okay? And then there's these kind of bigger bubbles around them that are these belief systems that come from your ancestors and also come from your political beliefs, from your beliefs about different issues during COVID time. These are kind of bigger bubbles that they're not as effect, they don't have as much effect as your bubble right around you that you own, but they're having an effect on you. Then there's all these other people that are in your life, the people you live with, people you're in a relationship with, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, people you see at work, people you respect, people you listen to in the communities. Their bubbles too are affecting you. There's like little strings or there's energy coming from their bubbles infiltrating yours. And so now it's not just your bubble, but you're kind of a conglomeration of all these different bubbles that are affecting you, both individual bubbles and collective bubbles. What is the lesson in all this to really, as I promise to bring it down to earth at the end, is own your bubble, own your manifesting bubble, mm -hmm. own your beliefs, own your subconscious, work with your subconscious, own your speech, and own your vision of the future. What is your vision? The more clear on your you are in your vision, I know this is like a Tony Robbins sort of thing, but it's true. The more clear you are on your vision, it, the much more able you'll be much more able to manifest it okay absolutely what is your vision for your individual timeline become very clear on that and continue to put energy into it in whatever way suits you whether it's visualizing it a lot whether it's writing it out and putting it all over your house whether it's creating vision boards whether it's decorating your space with images of what you want to see whether it's taking an action step maybe you're at the point where you can take an action step to make that happen. Maybe it's creating a new, maybe it's quitting your job, creating a new business. Maybe it's moving, you know, maybe it's buying a house. Maybe it's an investment, whatever it is, take action step. You know, if you're into um, like manifestation through candle magic, do that. If you're into, you know, whatever you're into affirmations, like just put energy, you can always be putting energy into what you want to create. And that will help it along to create. Now there's all sorts of other, um, things that are involved that have to do with your life plan. Nothing will happen if it can't happen in your life plan, but your life plan is not something that's linear. Again, it's all these possibilities. It's, it's if this, then this, if this, then this, if this, then this, and thus most likely whatever higher timeline, highest timeline you're visualizing, it's very likely, I mean, not always, but it's likely that that's a possibility in your life plan. And if it is, the more energy you put into it, the more, the higher the chances that you're going to be able to manifest that. How do we, and then to bring this all collectively, how do we manifest the new earth that we want to see by all manifesting our individual timelines of wealth, health, abundance, happiness, joy, freedom, success, love, all those beautiful things. Because as we manifest those in our timelines, that imagine we're now another vision. We're all 8 billion bubbles in this uh, grander bubble. All obviously, all eight billion of our bubbles are affecting the grander bubble. In fact, they are what is the grander bubble. They are the grander bubble. So, thus, we affect the the grander ascension game from the inside out. Ascension is an inside out game. Okay, we get the inside right, and then we see it uh, manifest in the outside world. So, as we create our preferred timeline, our preferred bubble, that adds that to the collective field. And like the hundredth monkey syndrome, it allows more people to have the energy to do that. And then it grows like a positive virus. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing the effects of a negative virus over the past two years. How about a positive virus of ascension? Awesome. So I think wow. I, I'm done with my, my <laughs> teaching here. If we want to, I'd love for you to, uh, thanks for, you know, letting me talk for an hour, but uh, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts and other people's 
Oh, that, 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 that was amazing. That was so great. I love talking about timelines. There's just so much uh, content that you shared with us. And some of the stuff is, I know, going to go over our head. We're not going to be able to grasp <laughs> it, right? For sure. But the thing is, you know, the key point also is like the time, what timeline do you want to create for yourself? Yes. Yes. Right. That's what it comes down to. Right. So what, what are you choosing for you? This is not about even the collective because everything we do for ourselves affects the collective. Yes. Yes, right? exactly. So we, exactly. We do have to bring it back to ourselves. Right. So yes. we, we have to know what it is that we want and then we have to energize it. Like you said, so my voice is going and, um, <clears throat> and take action on it. Yes. Right? Yes. And action is very important. You know, it's not just, um, you know, that's the yin and the, the yin and the yang, you know, um, the, the yin energy is the, the visualization of it. And then the yang energy is the actual action. Yang, yeah. it's pronounced it, Y-A-N-G, yang, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. the male so you energy. Have do, you have to do it all. You have to do both, right? right? You, you got right. to do the internal and the external, right? Yep. So, yep. But I, 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 I love talking about it because it's like, it's so, it's so relevant, right? And I remember talking about this a few weeks or months ago with my daughter and said, and I said to her, I said, you know what? When we have our dreams at nighttime, I think those are our parallel lives <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah, that we're seeing, they're, they're right? Parallel. And those are our parallel lives that we're seeing, yeah. and, you know, and living out and experiencing during our dream so, time. So supposedly in dream time, there's a silver cord that ties your astral body to your physical body. And your astral body is out in these kind of parallel timelines that they're they're kind of like temporary manifestations. Sometimes though, you go back to them and they recur because they have more energy to them. So I don't know if they're parallel lives or, I mean, but they could be, as I said, I, it's also very possible. It could be glimpses into, you know, you and 2021B or 2021C, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but either way, there's something to them for sure. You know, they're very important. Um, I, I find like dreams, um, I've always been fascinated by dreams. Sometimes I think they're symbolic. I think sometimes they're just playing out of different possibilities and uh, it's hard to uh, discern sometimes, but a lot of people keep dream journals. A lot of people like to look in dream interpretation and a lot of times Libra likes that I see. And uh, you know, you'll get a lot of good information from your dreams, but don't be too overly mm. obsessed or stuck on your dreams either because sometimes things are just kind of some alternate reality playing out but it doesn't mean much sometimes they are they are very symbolic and it really is reflecting exactly what's going on in your waking world and i think it, it really can be either and sometimes it's just you know the, as much of energy work and processing work that we do a lot of times in a dream time it's just a lot of that a lot of the processing happening all the, all the releasing and clearing happening yeah. you know so yeah. it's like let it go you know um, all right, so we yeah. want to take a few questions about timelines, right? About yeah, uh, yeah. what we Anything talked about. Anything I just talked about, yeah. Alternate realities, creating your, perf your preferred timeline. We're not doing the readings yet, right? Because yeah, we'll do, we'll do a couple of readings at the end, yeah. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do some readings at the end, but if you have any questions about what we just talked about, you know, um, speak up, right? So either well, One more thing, just just real briefly, I, I was just looking over my notes to make sure I... I portrayed everything I wanted to um again to bring it back to back back to the future um mm -hmm. in uh in one of the I think it was during the lightning storm right in 1955 um when I think this is in the beginning of back to the future I forgot it was the end of one or, or two but um a tree falls down a tree gets struck by lightning right where they hide the car mm -hmm. right behind the billboard and when they go back to 1985, it's now lone pine malls instead of twin pine malls. A lot of people don't notice that, right? But so that's like basically the butterfly theory that a little thing like that affects the future in a major way. The other theory is that the universe works around that to then, like if a time traveler were to try to affect things, the universe then works around that to kind of correct the timeline. So basically someone would have just come along and plant a new tree and then it would have stayed twin pine small. Mm. So that's like shows like subtle distinction in kind of time travel theory. So oh. I just want to add that one thing. Got it. So twin pine and lone pine, L-O-N-E, got it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one of the trees that got struck by lightning. So yeah. that's the butterfly effect versus kind of the universe correcting a time traveler's actions. 
I'm quite sure there's time travelers now. For sure. I, I, I'm sure there are. Like yeah. literal, not just souls. I'm saying like literal like government stuff where there's time travelers. I'm <laughs> quite sure, you know. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be I mean, surprised. Who, who, here, who here is a Simpsons fan and has like noticed how the Simpsons uh, have been able to like, you know, project and, and, uh, and, and tell the story of, of all sorts of events that have come to pass, like, like 9-11 and like Trump, you know, being elected, they foretold so many things. Uh, how is that? It could be astral projection. It could also be time travel. You know? So, okay, let's go to questions. All right. So there was a question from Andrea in the chat and she was asking, can we change the subconscious mind moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. As I said, uh, subconscious, um, really the most powerful way is through hypnosis so uh go to i i'm not i'm actually not a trained hypnotherapist but um i'm fascinated by them uh, i do some mild hypnosis work like in my regression sessions but go to a trained hypnotherapist listen to subliminals there's so many free subliminals on youtube this is really the best way to do it also affirmations if you are diligent and you repeat them daily for a period of time for example um pick out five to 10 affirmations, repeat them three to five times each in the mirror in the morning, um, do it for 30 days. Like that would make a difference. If you do it just for like three days and forget about it, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, exactly. You have to, you because have to think be about consistent. this. Think about this. How many words do you speak in a day? I mean, I I'm always talking. So probably me more than some other people, but, um, you know, we speak a lot of words. And uh, if you spend th two minutes doing affirmations, that might be like 0.5% of the words you speak that day or less. Yeah. So you, that's why you gotta be really repetitive with it. And then that's why you also, the more you uh, are diligent about the way that you speak in general, when you're not doing affirmations, remember every word you say is being heard by your subconscious mind. It's either reinforcing a subconscious program or it's breaking from a subconscious program and starting to form a new one so if you if you are not very wealthy and you want to be wealthy if you say i am wealthy i am wealthy i am wealthy i am wealthy your subconscious is rejecting 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 because of the program that's probably been there since you were seven or younger is um i have to struggle for money i have to struggle to pay my bills money is, I hate money, money sucks, I hate working, etc. That's all, that's the program. But if you repeated that, I don't know, 10,000 times, well, then you've got a new program. Another, another way um, that's pretty powerful is as you're lying in bed, about to fall asleep, that's when you're kind of entering into the theta state. I know, Laura, you're a theta healer. And actually, theta healing, the intention of theta healing, which is a great discipline, is to get a client into the theta state of mind in order to affect the subconscious mind. I know it's more than that. It's really working with God, mm -hmm. with creator energy, right? It's more yeah. than that. But a part of it really is also, I believe, affecting the subconscious in a powerful Absolutely. way, yeah. right? And that's why it's called theta healing, right? So when you're about to go to bed, you're about to fall asleep. You're like, you're start, you're kind of in that theta, you're starting to get into the theta brain wave state, which is when your, your subconscious mind is most accessible. And when the subconscious mind is most accessible, if you're repeating in your head, like, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, or new sales, new sales, new sales, new sales, and then you, you conk out, well, don't be surprised if you wake up the next morning or the day after and you got a new sale. Because <laughs> And it can happen that quickly. I mean, uh, you know, there's like some, uh, there's um, YouTube subliminals that I've listened to, like, to, you know, if, if I don't know, if my sales are a little low or whatever i'll just listen to some and i mean sometimes the day after it, it, it works so it can happen quickly if there's already kind of a foundation in your subconscious if there's too much of a gap between the subliminal and your subconscious belief systems nothing will happen there's just too large of a gap right. and all it, it doesn't mean you, you're not allowed to have wealth or health or happiness or whatever it just means that you have to do much more work and it could take a very long time and a lot of diligence, you know, and there may be other, like, let's say you're, there's something that you want. It always seems out of reach. 
you may have to evaluate, well, what other beliefs are in there that are keeping this out of reach? And actually that really is perfect for the realm of theta healing. So I don't know, Falar, if you still do theta sessions, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, I highly done, recommend theta I haven't done clients. very much this year just because okay. of everything going on. But yeah, now... I, I always recommend theta to clients. Yeah. I, I think it's great. Yeah. I'm getting back into doing personal sessions now. It's like, I have more great. time. Yeah, um, yeah. So there was a, a question back in the, that I just wanted to share really quickly because uh, from Renetta, my dear friend Renetta, she said um, she had a session with me <laughs> where I took her into a, a trance, right? And we went to a world where everything was made of animated illustration and she was there and she was, oh. the, cre and she was the creator of it. So she thought that was really fascinating and, and, and exciting, but she couldn't, well, go ahead. Well, I don't know, what, what does she think? What do you think? Was that a metaphor or was it a literal plane? It I mean, I, an astral plane can be anything. It was a literal plane, yeah, for sure. It was a place, yeah. It was a place, yeah. Is it, is it an, like an astral plane like in the earth field here? I know it's hard to say, but. It was somewhere yeah. else, it was. It was Go ahead, Renata. I don't know if it was here on earth, but it was a, it was a session where I was going to see my gift. Yeah. And, uh, my purpose and my, and, and it turns like that. And it was funny, you know, yeah. I was part of that. I, I was part that's, of That sounds so cool. I mean, I guess that that's another piece of evidence about just the pos, pos the infinite possibilities and the infinite nuances and complexities as far as different planes that can be experienced. You know, in a lot of, uh, in some of the starseed discovery sessions, when I see a client that's in from the Andromeda galaxy, like myself, I know like, like even like farther back, I, I believe that like even more ascended than the Assyrian self for me is the Andromeda self. Um, but I see like these visions of, oh, I've seen it like five times with clients, like this little turquoise blue, like man, woman, androgynous being like in a pod Libra, you've seen that. I'd love to get Libra on in a second, but um, like uh, creating, just manifesting, just in this, like, like I talked with the Montauk project, apparently they brought that to earth, but like in a more benevolent way, somewhere in the Andromeda galaxy, just manifesting, creating from this little pod. Can we get Libra on for a second? Yeah. Thank you, Renata. Libra, go ahead. You want to unmute yourself? Hi. Hi, Hi Le Libra. I love your onk earrings. That's, oh, that's thank beautiful. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I have. I've traveled, I guess, ast astral traveling. I've yeah. traveled to Andromeda yeah. and Arcturus. Oh, mostly, nice. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. And cool. I, I, I know that I'm Arcturian. I don't think I'm Andromeda, but I always seem to be there. So I'm not really sure. Well, maybe you that. are. Yeah. 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 I, I say there's a strong possibility. But when I'm there, I definitely see a turquoise being. That's so and cool. Wow, at, at that other people they, see they, that. At first, they didn't present their full self to me. It was just the yeah. hands. And they were doing okay. energy work on me. And then oh, eventually, cool. after being there for a while, they presented their full self. And they oh, were so in a pod cool. as well. In a, yeah. In a, it, was, it was a lake. Okay. I, there's so many different things. There's a lake, and the, it, the pod came out of the lake. Also, I've seen I saw that exact a mountain. thing too with the pod being surrounded by water. Yeah, you know, like, there was a mountain so and inside the mountain. Wow. There were weird. lots of pods waiting okay. to like incubating. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I mean, the the possible, and I love your art as well. I don't know, is it, that your art? That's not mine, but I love it. I, I'm a writer, so I'm Oh, not, beautiful. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm a writer. I could never paint anything like you know yeah. that i I'm, I'm much more with words so yeah thank you so much for coming on thank you awesome thank you libra uh, yeah it's like you know it just the more i go on and i'm sure 10 years from now I'll, I'll even have more evidence of this it's just the possibilities in life are endless and the 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 complexities and nuances and the possibilities of time and space and incarnations and uh different branches of, you know, one soul and different souls and alternate realities. And I mean, we didn't even talk about like, you know, uh, the afterlife, the idea of the afterlife, that's a, a, a collective astral plane. And then there's mm -hmm. different versions of the astral plane. There's hell realms, there's heaven realms, there's, there's ghosts as well. You know, what's mm -hmm. the deal with ghosts? I mean, they're here in, in our same timeline, but they're invisible and their yeah. perception 
of it is very, very different. It's just the, the possibilities are so unlimited. Can we go to uh, Destiny? I, I see her, uh, her uh, putting her hand up. Hey, hey, Matthew. I was Hi. wondering about um, timeline bleed throughs. Yeah. Because right now it's like I am here on this timeline, but I'm experiencing a past life, past life trauma timeline as well at the same time. How are you experiencing it? Like literally physically, like I can feel it. It's almost like, uh, this is really strange. Right now I'm experiencing my ego. Uh, like the alter ego is like dragging me to these past timelines. So somehow it's almost like this, this being from a past timeline and my ego have consorted together and they're trying. Yeah, it, it feels like, and it sounds like you're, you're kind of at an inflection point in your life plan where there's some certain, you know, past life trauma that the energy of it, it hasn't been dissipated. So instead of, so your soul is saying this, you're actually benefiting from this because your soul is saying, instead of you having to re-experience this trauma in a very kind of an awful way in this life by having it happen you can experience it more as an astral experience coming in and and your uh, mental experience and clear it through that does that make sense that makes sense but it's still not a very good experience <laughs> okay well I, I i yeah i i don't know exactly what you're going through but i mean uh i really the more we just bring light and awareness to whatever it is like literally visualizing bringing light to it can be good and just make sure that you're creating the future that you want to create too don't spend too much time focusing on this or the past because it'll derail you if you if you're focused too much on it but really just by creating the future timeline as i talked about that you want to create um you're gonna this will unravel by itself as long as you're being compassionate with it let it unravel itself as you keep moving forward, if that makes sense. Thank you for that. Okay. Thank and, you. and of course, you know, if, if you feel called to, you know, we could do a, a soul plan reading if you purchase one of the packages and we can get deep, deep into this, you know, into the specifics of it. That might be interesting. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Destiny. And I love what he said. He said something that it was a positive thing. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Well, ultimately, everything is a positive thing. It always is. I mean, it's just it may not seem like it in the present moment, but the the uh, intention from a soul level is always positive, no matter what. There's no exception. Sometimes just, you know, uncomfortable things play out because there's something that karmically needs to happen. Um, people can watch if they're interested in this topic. They can watch the last talk we did, what, two months ago on past lives. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. uh, We went deep into this. Yep. And karma, past life karma. Yeah. Um, but ultimately everything is always happening for our benefit. It just may not seem like it or feel like in the moment, but you can always look back. You can always look back, especially years after when the energy of it's dissipated, you look back and like, Oh, that was exactly what I needed. You know? Absolutely. So Sherry's asking, it's a strange question. Sherry, I gotta say, what about having a dream and waking up with bruises? Oh my God. Wow. I don't know. That's a tough one. Oof. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, there's a possibility of uh, being attacked during the dream by an entity. Um, Alara, what do you think? I don't know. That's a tough one. I don't know. It's like, I, I, I'd say probably I would, I would go to entities. Uh, the first thing I would go to. That's probably the the highest likelihood is being attacked physically by an entity in the room yeah, yeah. and you're in the dream you're also seeing the entity because you're kind of in this in-between space i mean i guess other i don't know what other possibilities unless you're literally like changing timelines uh in and out and one you're bruised when you aren't i mean or maybe you have anemia i, I don't know but if it's something purely spiritual i would say probably entity attack which is something pretty serious um you want to make sure you're getting, uh, you know, salt, put salt in all corners of your room, Palo Santo your room every day, you know, invoke the power of Christ, invoke the power of Archangel Michael, uh, open up a window and, and tell anything in there to leave, have black tourmaline um, all around your room, have a statue or uh, photos of Archangel Michael all around the room, um, put black tourmaline around uh, the corners of your bed 
at the bottom, um, use Florida water, get some Florida water and spread it throughout um, your, your room. Um, you can uh, also, there's frequencies on YouTube for free that are like room clearing frequencies, entity clearing frequencies. And if the attacks don't stop, you know, consult uh, a witch that you trust, you know, or consult uh, a spiritual professional that you trust. Absolutely. And I, I, I love how you mentioned the Florida water. I use the Florida water for like heavy duty stuff. I use Palo yeah, Santo on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's strong. And, and I it's, use Palo oh boy, it's, uh, it smells, it's intense. You know, I like so. it. I like the smell. You like it? It's so <laughs> alcohol. I, uh, I, I like Florida water and I love Palo Santo. I don't like sage. So, you know, like. Really? Oh, I love that's my I, favorite smell. I, I, I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh my God. I hate it. Eight. Strong <laughs> word. I know. Strong word. But yeah. But yeah. Um, so I was just going to share. There's something I saw here that I wanted to share. Somebody, Stephanie, I think mentioned something just in case anybody is curious. She mentioned something about you helped her with her COVID symptoms yeah, with the yeah. candle magic. Yeah. Yeah. That was one thing I that I wanted to share really yeah. quickly. Yeah. So, you know, if, if some of you, yeah, Steph, Stephanie, what, you know, she, she might not have made it. Um, I don't know. I, I, we already said the word, so I'll, I mean, we'll say it again. Like what you're probably not going to get monetized for this. Sorry, but you know, ivermectin, I, it probably saved her life. And yeah, we also, you know, did some energy work as well, but yeah. uh, the yeah. ivermectin probably saved her life. Um, and I know Caroline wanted to share a testimonial that she she worked with you. Her and her husband both worked yes, with you. Yes, right? yes. And so she wanted to share that. that. Uh, she said, "I yes. highly recommend a session with Matthew." Oh my God! Thank you. Both my husband and I had each an individual session, and both were extremely informative for our health oh, and many suggestions you. as to thank which you. vitamins, etc., to take, oh and they God, all helped you. greatly. Good. Oh, good. I, 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 I was, I've been meaning to hear. That's great. Good. Also, good, Matthew good. is kind, a true intuitive and guide. Oh, I, I'm testifying that any soul plan readings, past life readings and personal readings are brilliant. Thank you, Matthew. Oh, and Caroline. My God. Thank you so much, Caroline. <laughs> my heart is glowing. Thank you. Oh, there she is. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so nice to see you. Okay. Oh my God. I love, I, this is. is like, I, I don't want to say, but this might be my favorite podcast that I do. I, you know, because just because of the community, like the people are so oh, nice. Thank you. I just, so everyone's so loving out here. Um, Linda, and last question, because I want to talk about the special offer and yeah. I want to, I want, I want to remind everybody stuff. And then we want to yeah. still do a few quick yeah. past life readings if possible. Yep. Yep. So yep. Yep. Linda was asking, can we consciously step from a timeline or plane we are on and onto a higher one and remain there? <laughs> How do we do that? Yeah, we can, but it's through repetition. So it's not something you can do instantly, like getting off of a highway uh, and on, you know, onto another highway. It's something that really requires repetition, but absolutely. Um, one of my uh, courses on the, um, the special offer package here, uh, which one was it? It's the powerful visualization techniques for Ascension. Um, that one, there's a lot of great techniques for timeline jumping. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's repetition. It is really what it is. It's repetition, but it's also you deciding what you want. You, you yeah, that's true. What you want, you know. Yeah. You have to know what it is that you want. You do. When you don't know, you're kind of like it's. Imagine like, who who's been to a, a like a water park when you're a kid and they have the lazy river, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. when you're not collect like it's someone in the chat, people in the chat, tell me if you've been on the lazy river. Well, you're laying down, and if you're just not directing at all you're going to go into, you know, under the mushroom with the water coming down and under the waterfall, you know, you're going to bump into other people, you know, you'll get, you'll get wet. I mean, whereas if you're consciously, if you wanted to, I mean, it's, it's not real fun if you avoid everything, but if you wanted to, you could do a lap around the lazy river and avoid all the pitfalls and just create your own journey. Or you could consciously go into the waterfall if you want to get wet. It's a hot day or go into the it's fine. i remember when i was a kid you know we used uh, my friend and best friend and i would go all the time and our parents would drop us off and some days it was like 95 degrees and it's like you wanted to be at everything some days it's like 68 degrees it's like no you want to avoid you know yeah. all this stuff on the laser it's too cold you know Absolutely. um but yeah it's it, it just like you said you know you, you want to consciously become the director you know own your manifestation bubble 
Um, if things aren't happening instantly, it doesn't mean that they're not meant to. And here's another misconception sometimes is like, if there's obstacles along your path, like, you know, let's say a great example is let's say you want to create a new business. You want to, you know, leave your, your nine to five and you want to create a new business and you want to work from home like I do or Lara does. And it's a wonderful lifestyle. Um, and let's say, you know, you commit to it. And in the first six months, you're struggling. Uh, you're not getting enough sales clients. It's just not working. You're, it, it doesn't mean it's not meant for you. It just means that there's obstacles that really on one level, your soul is challenging you, whether you can overcome the obstacles. And on another level, your subconscious mind may just not have a strong enough belief that it's possible. Mm -hmm. So you want to work with action, practical action, you know, whether it's marketing or, or whatever it is. Also, you want to work with the subconscious and work with manifestation. You want to really yeah. do both. Absolutely. You got to do both. You can't just wish and dream and just do, and yeah. just do yeah. energy work. That's not right. enough. You got to take action. This is a 3D world. Yes. You got to take action. Um, yes. So Stephanie says, Matthew is absolutely amazing. He has helped me with vitamins I needed after doing a body scan. He yes. was my rock Thank during you. COVID, especially mental part while experiencing COVID. And I have to say, like the first time we talked, it was even before you had your first show on our show, but when you heard about Robert, like you called me and said, you know, let, let's, let's talk, you know? And I said, well, Robert can't talk. He's, he can't communicate. He's in a hospital. I like he can't. So, yeah. you know, so I did the session on behalf of Robert and it was like, I was just like, like, I don't even know you. And I, I've only just met you and you're being so kind. And, and, and I was like, Oh my God, that is so, so nice. I was like blown away, totally yeah. blown away. And from that day forward, I was your fan. I was your biggest fan. It's like, oh, you know, thank you. Yeah. Cause you're not in it I, just for, I don't know, for you were like kind, yeah. you know, and you were there I mean, for me you know, when I needed I, help. Yeah. Uh, you're yeah. I, I, I just, I, I want to help people. I've always, my whole, I just always want to help people. And I didn't ask you because I didn't know you well yeah. enough to ask, right? So no, I was like, it, it, okay, no, I can't course, ask you. <laughs> I, I, I want to help. I just, I really want to help people. Yeah. So you're amazing. I just, you know, you're great. So, um, all right. So I want to talk really briefly about the special offer because uh, we want to do still some past life readings. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're so much fun. They are so much fun, right? So, um, the special offer is available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Matthew nine. I'm going to put the link in the chat again. And again, remember, um, if you order or purchase, sorry, within 24 hours, use the discount code TACS10. And that's only good for 24 hours to get a 10% discount. If you, you try to use it afterwards, it won't work. And then you're going to be like calling me and saying, Alara, it didn't work. Nope. 24 hours, baby. 24 hours. All right. I like it. I like it. It's cool. New, right. new thing. Yeah. This stuff's always good. I like it. I like it. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's go over the special offer. So uh, there's three tiers. Um, there's the digital package that includes 16 of my courses. Uh, they're all from the past couple of years. And there's so much information in all these courses. Inf information, activations, meditations, they're all between an hour and a half and three hours. And they're all on very different subjects, which is cool. You're going to get a whole wide range of learning through these courses. Uh, there's the intro to candle moon magic, which I talked about. There's a healing with colors course. If you want to learn how to use colors in energy healing for yourself or others, fascinating. There's the, uh, EFT to heal the seven main chakras. I teach the EFT or tapping the emotional freedom technique. Okay. For those of you who it's an amazing, amazing tool to use EFT, uh, in that course, we go through EFT for the seven chakras from the root on up and we do clearing for past life stuff and current life stuff uh, in each chakra also teaching you how to create your own tapping sequences all about angels archangels ascended masters and spirit guides this is learning how to work with all sorts of different entities from all sorts of different religions and you know from greek gods to roman gods to egyptian gods and goddesses to christian you know deities to hindu gods and goddesses and i work with all of them in my, you know, magic uh, practice and just in general, who do I pray to? I pray to all of them. That's just mm -hmm. me. So in this course, you just learn about all sorts of different ones that you can use to improve your life. And that's another way that you can kind of, um, your bubble that we talked about, your manifestation bubble, get help. It's like getting help from higher teachers that are in the astral plane. Don't be 
don't be afraid to use them because it can really help accelerate you, right? Uh, we've got the change reality by changing your words course I already talked about is completely appropriate for what we're talking about today will really enhance your understanding of the subconscious mind and how to tailor your speech to create the manifestation bubble you want to create the human energy field 101 this is a three hour course a lot of visuals in this course we're going in very kind of scientifically to help you understand the nature and structure of the chakras and the nature and structure of the auric field and the human energy field and it's it might be more complex than you know from diagrams you've seen uh, how to move on completely from your ex. This is for people who've been through heartbreak. This is for people who are going through heartbreak. This is for people who have best friends or family members going through heartbreak. We go into soul contracts. We help you to understand, you know, what happens on a soul level when people separate. And the idea of, I talked a little bit today about different possibilities and soul contracts and really just how to heal your heart. So it's a very, very helpful um, one for everyone. Uh, we have the spiritual hygiene, core cutting and grounding 101 course, which is all about how to protect yourself from entities, how to clear entities and auric anomalies out of your energy field, how to truly ground, how to do cord cutting or cord removal, okay? Uh, awakening the divine masculine, which is all about using your left brain logical mind to create, like we talked about, to create uh, consciously the timeline you want to create. Uh, creating the 5DU is very much uh, like that as well, except we actually go into some more specifics as far as planning. I give a model of your life as like a pie and we go into each parts of the pie. We go into your future timelines through meditation during that. Uh, dissolving the ego, which has these 12 activations to dissolve different aspects of the, sub, of the subconscious that almost everyone carries within them where the ego falsely believes it is something that it isn't. And this is to help kind of dissolve the negative ego out of you. Uh, mastering your intuition, which is all about how to use different tools, both um, like from pendulums and cards to different tools within your own body to really learn and understand your intuition, how your intuition works. Okay. Uh, there's the navigating the dark night of the soul, uh, which is exactly what it sounds for people who feel like they're going through dark night. This will help you to understand and navigate through it. Putting the past in the past, which has all these energy activations to help clear out past karma and past stuff, not necessarily past karma, but just your to clear out any negative remnants of stuff that's happened from the past is still dogging you in your mind that still is creating blockages in your chakras there's a lot of energetic activations in that one and then a deeper level of forgiveness which goes into the five stages of forgiveness and how do we truly forgive people what is the alchemy of forgiveness you also get a guided meditation to meet your spirit guides and activate psychic gifts this meditation i created like five years ago i've been amazed over the years at how many people have come to me, maybe it was like four years ago, but oh, how many people come to me and be like, oh my God, that was the first time I met one of my spirit guides was on your little 12 minute meditation. And so I, I've just gotten rave reviews for this 12 minute meditation. You get that included. You also get uh, a healing transmission called I love you regardless. That's an energetic activation to open the heart. So that's all in the digital package, $539 value, dollar value for just 155. If you want to do a personal session with me, it's just $44 more. $199 for package B. It has all those courses and bonuses, plus a 45 minute soul plan reading with me. Caroline talked about the soul plan reading. Uh, Laurie talked about the soul plan reading. We'll go into soul contracts with others. Past life stuff we'll go into if you want to know, um, you know, the origins of your soul. If you want to uh, know what your future is like on different possible timelines, you know, I do, I do some tarot usually in those as well. Um, and uh, we'll really get a sense of like what is most likely for your future timelines. What is the highest possibility? Uh, you want to know about your spirit guides and really any questions at all that you just have about your past, present, and future um, or your spirit guides or other people in your life. I probably should be able to get some valuable information for you in those. Uh, and that, so that's package B for 199. Package C, if you really want to explore past lives, you also get the past life regression. It's a two hour past life regression. Uh, I know some people on this call have done one with me. Uh, and you're going to, I'm going to guide you into a mild state of hypnosis. And before you know it, you'll be in the bodies of other characters that your soul has played in other lifetimes. So before you know it, you'll be there. Uh, and usually we get to go to two to three lifetimes. You also go to get to see the space between lives. And from the space between lives, you get to interpret what those lifetimes that you experience mean for you and how it connects to this lifetime. So that's an $888 value if you were to buy it on, you know, everything individually on my website for just $333 for people on this call. 
you get the 10% off discount that brings it down to uh, under $300. Uh, so it's a fantastic deal. Um, uh, the code is TACS10, right? For 24 okay. hours, only available for two weeks. Uh, I do tend to be pretty booked up. So the sooner you purchase the package, the sooner you'll be able to get in with me. Don't expect to get in next week, you know, <laughs> but it won't be too long. You know, we'll get you in uh, relatively soon. So yeah, a couple of weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That was like, I was like, as you were going through the, 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 the digital packet, I'm like, there's so much information yeah, here. Yeah, you know, there like, really I love is. it. I love it. There's yeah. like so much, I mean, like, you know, you name it, it's there. Right. So please yeah. do take advantage of that. And, and like I said, I've done the soul plan reading myself. Amazing. And of course I have done past life regressions myself. Um, and experience them as well, and they are life changing. So if you if you get a chance to do they that are. with Matthew, please they do. Are. They are life changing. Yeah, like, that was one. Of, that was one of the first things that I um, that I like purchased when I was early on in my journey, like ten years ago. I just I don't know. I found it in a classified ad or on Craigslist or so. I don't remember how I found it, but um, I was like, oh, past life regression. That sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. screw it. Let me just try it. <laughs> And oh my God, I mean, it wasn't that fun because I saw a lot of kind of, you know, not so fun lifetimes, but it helped me to understand so much about exactly. myself. Exactly. It's one of my favorite things to do with clients. It's definitely one of the things I recommend everyone does at least once in their life is do a past life progression. Yeah. Uh, Teresa was on this call. I don't know if she's still on, but we did two, you know, because uh, she, she, we really wanted to explore other clients I've done two with. Uh, you know, really there's hundreds of lifetimes or thousands that you can mm -hmm. choose from. And you, we try to, you know, just kind of set the intention to go to the ones that'll be most valuable for you to really understand your exactly. current lifetime better. And people can watch, um, you know, if they're, if they're on the fence about the past life regression, you know, watch um, the last show. I think it was the last show we did, right? Was that the past life show? Yeah, I know July, we did a star July, seat. July 20th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go back on Alara's YouTube channel and watch that show and uh you know that'll if you're on the fence about a past life regression it'll help you to really understand it because i i really go in depth about what is, is involved yeah. in it and i give examples from clients um of their experiences on the past life regression so i think i had my first one in 2010 and it was it was life-changing it was so yeah, I, yeah. it was so amazing and it opened my yeah. eyes to like so much you know yeah. so yeah that was the wow <laughs> so please if you can do it um all right so we so again all those packages are available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash matthew nine and for the first 24 hours take advantage of the 10 percent discount which you know at checkout put in tacs10 all right and um so yeah please do take advantage of that as well so now we want to do a few quick quick <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm pretty 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 tired here maybe we can do two does that sound yeah. good yeah okay. sounds good all right, so Libra wants to go first. Okay, <laughs> so I guess um, for for the, the the two lucky people here, um, basically, if you want to bring up an issue, it could be either if you want me to read into a, a relationship, whether it's romantic, family, um, friendship, whatever, and you want to know like the past life, uh, what what happened in past lives between you and that soul, that's one option. Or if there's like some sort of event or tendency or theme or obstacle that tends to bother you and you really want to understand better um you can ask me about that and then i'll read what sort of past life um, occurrences might relate to that awesome all right libra you want to unmute yourself Okay, great. Hi. Hi again. Hi. Um, I, don't, I can't say that I have a particular event. I can just say that I have been, especially within the last few years, seeing, I, I've been having intense visions, very vivid. And I have been told, in the visions, I'm being told, like, you're a time witch, you're a time jumper. And God is segment is instructing me on how to move my hands and manipulate Yes, and okay. how to manipulate particles and fractals and wow. molecules. She's Whoa. showing me, but I, I've also seen- like, So let me connect before, uh, so I'll just stop you. Let me okay. connect with an Egyptian timeline and okay. see what I see. How does that sound? Because I know there's something here with that. Yes. So, okay, show me. There's an Egyptian timeline that's related to what she's talking about. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm picking up this uh, this male, this tall male being who wears blue, wears this exactly the color you have on. I just pointed at my screen, but I should point there. This exactly color. the color. Exactly that color. Yeah, my favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that color. That's pretty close to my favorite color too. Um, exactly that color, and uh, kind of in in these wizardry robes and. It's like, it seemed like you were uh, an associate of, you're someone who would teach the pharaohs, teach the- Yes, um, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, teach the elites yes. in, in Egypt when magic was very much alive and there were a lot of extraterrestrials uh, that were working with the Egyptian pharaohs and you yes. were one of these. And it seems like you, you I think you might've come from Syrian parts. Yes. into the Egyptian timeline uh, and just kind of, it seemed like you were someone who was a teacher of the pharaohs and of the elites and you could dematerialize if you want to. You did all sorts of magic to entertain them too. Right. You would make things disappear and appear. Uh, you would like turn water into different colors and things. And, uh, but you would also teach them, you would do healing and teach uh, the, the children of the pharaohs and the children of the uh, the elites how to to do certain things so it was like one of the teachers in the mystery schools but in in ancient uh i was gonna say atlantis but you know there is a relationship with atlantis because this may have been after atlantis this right. may have been after atlantis right when around the time when the pyramids were probably built i believe it was around 10,500 bc um by the atlanteans that had kind of escaped the destruction of atlantis and we're very much probably guided by Syrian extraterrestrials. And I think you may have been someone in human form with this hat, this blue hat and this blue robe, but you were uh, teaching. And that would make sense, time jumper, because maybe you came kind of from Syria to do that. Um, and maybe it, it's, I, I think your soul probably has connections in Sirius, Orion's Belt, and Lyra. Uh, yes, I think a, a Lyra big part of your, your soul essence that's, uh, operating in the physical as I see you now is this Lyran essence. Yes. Uh, you're probably a big fan of cats. Yes. I, am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have a black cat myself as every good witch should. Right. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, and, and cats are very important in, in Egypt as well. Yes. Mm. Very, cats were very much revered as were dogs but cats were kind of even higher right. right. Um, but yeah so time jumper I, I don't know how to interpret that um i maybe you know a part of you maybe some manifestation of you in another lifetime maybe that one maybe that person that i'm seeing had jumped maybe jumped been a bit of a time traveler okay and kind of had the um the knowledge and the wisdom to travel and maybe had actually taught the egyptians how to time jump a bit okay as well okay. i i wouldn't be surprised if time travel is a lot older than you know the montauk project and back in ancient egypt maybe you know i think the, so the elites and the pharaohs weren't weren't doing it too you know yes, yes. um so yeah i, I saw uh what i saw I, i'm and of going course, to, sorry I, to interrupt of course you've got the onk earrings and oh I'm yes sure. i i'm i've been drawn to egypt since have you, have I, you I mean, been just, to the, the pyramids of, of giza i've never seen them in person yeah, make, make sure when you can you take a, a pilgrimage there in person oh, it's pretty powerful definitely definitely pretty powerful, yeah I, I've had, uh, I, I'm saying, I was told it was my future self, but it could be a past self where I, I was in Egypt, I put yeah. my hands up, people were surrounding me on the sand, and as soon as I put my hands up, everybody passed out, and oh. it was interesting because that same day, I got on the subway here, I'm in DC, I got on the subway, subway, and someone said, do you know that you are a hybrid instructor to the pharaohs? What? Yeah. Wow, so what you that's just said wild. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody just came up wow. to me and said, "You are a, you are a hybrid from once a star system. They didn't know which one." Yeah. And they said, "You well, taught the pharaohs." What happened though? You were just why did you like put them all to sleep? Did you, did you wake them up after like? Wait, say that again. Why did you put all those people to sleep? Like you know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it just something shot out of my hands, and it everybody was just too just... powerful. Everyone is too powerful. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I, well, I think you me. were you. I think you were very benevolent. It feels like you're just a benevolent influence. It wasn't like you were yeah, 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 any definitely. dark magic or anything. I, right, I don't... all right. I think I was healing them. I think yeah. there was a transmission. Yeah, it could be. It was just, it was just super powerful. 
yeah yeah, yeah. so okay cool that's great i'm really happy thank you shared so all that much. Thank you. yeah thank you so i'm much. so grateful thank you yeah yeah me too thank you wow thank you libra that's awesome um okay ekaterina hi alara thank you hi matthew hi ekaterina ekaterina where are you from uh from moscow Moscow. Oh, I live in oh. Canada. Though. Late night. Okay. Yeah, but no, she, no, li but she, live she lives in Canada. Oh, you're in I'm Canada. Canada. I'm from uh, from Russia. So basically, you know, like this, just briefly, the Soviet Union. It was a lot of um, all this experiment with parapsychology. Yeah, you, you wonder what they were doing too with time travel. Oh my god! Right? And now, even now, there are so many people who travel to different planets. Not only astral. Some of them real in real time. From, from Russia. Well, I mean, yeah, if you read yeah. a lot of what's, what's happening in this um, kind of uh, spiritual circles, extraterrestrial in yeah. Russian sources, you will find oh. so much information. It's just amazing. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what can I read for you? Well, basically, I can, re I can relate to everything you told uh, Libra because I, have, I also have a lot of Syrian connection, a lot of Egyptians. So I know a lot yeah. of my past lives. Uh, but basically... In this lifetime, I have so much. Everything is about my physical body, and I have extreme skill. Like I, cat, well, hold on, we gotta stop. T tell me about your cat. I we gotta take a break. I want to know about your cat. <laughs> I have, I, I've got five. Five cats! Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love cats. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Well, what I'm trying to tell you that I have an extreme physical. Uh, <laughs> manifestations at this lifetime yeah they are my helpers and at this point has been for four months heart pain uh, a lot of heart physical okay. so anything related to healing my heart at this particular moment so do you have physical heart problems yes okay um are you on medication oh my Oh, oh my god okay i tell you it's the reaction to the vaccine i had i really struggle after the first vaccine for seven oh, weeks no. and now it's my second uh, dose i'm really having a hell of a time it's really uh, it's kind oh. of um, uh very high heart heart rate sometimes my blood pressure oh. goes like 70 to 30. uh i have kind of heart inflammation so a lot of stuff so sorry well um you know i i do have to just say this legally because we're on youtube and facebook i'm not a doctor or healthcare professional and none of this is medical advice however i would look into uh c60 if you're not already taking it c60 okay no it's not, i'm not familiar what is it c60 uh c60 fullerenes it's it's the most powerful antioxidant known to man 228 times more powerful than vitamin c um you take it you know take well, for you, I would suggest looking into taking something like uh, at least a teaspoon a day. But um, you can, uh, maybe you can email me. Um, and also the other thing, I have a, a, a healer friend who, uh, she's been telling me that she's been doing amazing work with people who have had issues after, you know, the shots. Uh, it's not something I specialize in, but my friend does. So if you want to find a way to email me, maybe go to my website or you know, mm -hmm. can I just share my website real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. Or, yep. Okay. So it's you are a divine human.org uh, is my website. And then there's a contact me page. Okay. Find a way to contact me and, uh, or, or just ask Alara and re relay it, you know? Yes. I will um, ask Alara to be there. Thank yeah. you. But, but I, I might be able to help you with some things. Um, but let's, uh, have, 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 did you have heart problems before this? No. Really? Wow. No. Oh, I'm so sorry that you've had this experience. But you know what? Um, At the same time, uh, my few, I actually went for this willingly. I wanted to do it. I kind of knew yeah. that I will have side effects. Uh, my soul actually is uh, in total agreement with this. Because I, it, partially, partially, like, I know that I'm doing it for collective kind of, you know, like, I mean. Right, of I, course. And, and there is an aspect sorry. to that. Yes, there's absolutely don't an aspect. Don't feel sorry for me. Yes. No, no, I don't feel sorry for it. I just um you know it's 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 a shame to hear that that's it's happening to people and i know it is let me see let me tune in and let me pick up because the theme of this is of course past lives let me pick up on what past life experiences might relate to you know the heart the physical heart or um 
just this experience in general. So let me just, just tune yeah, in yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So in, a, in another life, and this may have been more than one, but in at least one, one, one lifetime, what I see is being a, a larger man, um, may have been like Bulgarian or somewhere in the Soviet Union, and uh, who, uh, who, who passed away of a heart attack. He was very uh, disconnected from his emotions. He drank a lot. Um, he, uh, he was kind of mean and nasty only looked out for himself. He liked money. He liked, you know, uh, alcohol, vodka, gambling, you know, hookers. I just, but there was not much hard energy towards anyone else. He, okay. he hated his family. Uh, uh, and he passed away of a heart attack due to just on a metaphysical level, that constriction. And in this lifetime, you're so you're aware of that on some level and it, there may have been a figure in your life that kind of was like that maybe um, or you see people in the outside world that are like that and you you, you wouldn't want not, to be like that not really in my life like i have very gentle males in my life okay no <laughs> well if you saw someone like um i i guess the connection i want to make is that your soul wanted to have the opposite experience in this lifetime have that uh -huh. gentleness be cultivated be in environments where you can portray that gentleness feel it and with this experience now it's like the way you were seeing it was like i'm gonna do what's right for the collective and you know help to eliminate this disease and it kind of on some deep past life level it's a reminder, it's like the polarity, it's the opposite experience of the cold hearted man who had a heart had heart problems because he hated everyone. You love everyone. And you love the world and you want to do what's best for the world. And yet having heart problems too, it's just a polarizing experience of it. It's it's like a, an interesting way of the soul having a karmic return, but in a very soft way. So I, just from a metaphysical and a past life level, it's likely that you'll heal from all this, that you will, that you'll, you'll be okay. Your heart will come back to normal. It may take some time, it may take a lot of natural healing. And through the natural healing, you'll learn a lot about natural healing that maybe you didn't even know before. Um, and you'll learn about how to become a better energy healer yourself. Um, and maybe you know, you may, are, are you married? I've been married for almost 40 years, 40. 40 years. And 40. It, it, a, a lot of times what happens when someone has heart problems and they're married is it's an opportunity to have a grander, deeper love experience or like a, a, a re, like a, a new honeymoon period in their relationship. Like, a reconnection with their their husband or wife that they haven't felt in a while through kind of the you know the thinking of the fear and the mortality of i don't want to say fear but just you know it's like it's a bit scary yeah. to have heart problems and it's like oh is this it or am i going to be around for a while and it's just like through those a lot of times i see that marriages actually kind of balance and become they move to a higher level so is this making sense or feeling Feeling right for you? Uh, well, it, uh, yes, I would say yes to some degree. I don't think it's the whole kind of story, but yes. What what story? No, I don't feel it's the whole kind of story, but partially yes. What what else? What would you add on to it? Well, I, I definitely feel there are so many, so many layers. It's just yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure there's layers that are much more complex than just the one guy I'd seen. I'm sure there's a lot more. Mm. But do you pick up any like specifics yourself? Well, I will pick up on the last one that I feel, yeah, it's true. Like maybe like there is more room 
for the last one in my marriage. Do, do you have children? Really do you have yes. children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just like with all, with all the family members, it can be an opportunity on a soul level to recalibrate and, and heal and move these relationships to their next level. Um, and then, you know, it's also obviously physical too. And, and as I said, you're going to learn a lot about a lot of healing methodologies through this and your diet might change. Um, you know, you might be more focused on exercise. I mean, th there's a lot of positives that will come out of this. I, I get, I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, even if, even if it, all of it doesn't resonate, I, I guess the main points to take away are, are just that it, it's happened for a, a sole reason. You didn't make the wrong decision. You didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you will heal from this. It just might take some time and you might learn a lot in the process and uh, you're healing other lifetimes in the same, you know, that's another like uh, interesting thing I didn't even bring up in this talk. And, you know, I know we're at the end here, but it's just like anything you do that you heal, you're healing in a way your ancestors lifetimes in a, in a, in a way, and in a way your past lives, you're, you're not necessarily changing what happened in history in reported history, whatever timeline, but you are diffusing the energies. You're diffusing the, any stuck energies. Definitely. So I hope I was helpful, even if it didn't all resonate, you know, take what resonates and whatever else, you know, just let go and come up with your own conclusions. But I, I hope I was at least a little bit helpful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I will ask a lot and write to you about this uh, supplement, which I wasn't aware of. Yeah, yeah, please, please write other, to me. Yeah, mm, please, other please. physical support. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank awesome. you, Matthew. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Katarina. And definitely send me a message. I'll give you his details, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, all right. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah, everybody's saying what an amazing call it was, how much they've learned from it, how much they appreciated it. There you are. I was going to say, where are you? There you are. Uh, but yeah, we were like, Two hours and 17 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You must be exhausted too. No, this was this was wonderful. And the thing is, yeah. you know, in, 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 in a two minute reading, you're not going to pick up on everything in a two minute reading. Like when you work yeah, with somebody. I, I'm sure in there's, a, there, you know, there's a lot more to it. I, 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 I don't know. That's just what I was picking up that I do feel there's this, you know, other lifetime of, and it's like a, it's a polar, it's like, Okay, one end of the polarity is like hard problems because you hate everyone and yourself. Yeah. The other end of the polarity is hard problems because you love it. And, it, and it's, it's a weird thing, but it's just her specific soul had kind of chosen this experience. And then, of course, there's always the possibility of other timelines. Maybe there's a timeline where she didn't get it. And, but the you know, thing is, have we, this problem, but... we experience everything, right? So we have experienced yeah. everything. We're going to experience all aspects of life. So all the dualities, yeah. right? So yeah. it, if, we, we if, do. That's, yeah. So, that's the yeah, whole, so, what souls do. We, we yeah. want to experience all. And, and as I said, I highly recommend people listen to the, or watch the past life show. Cause I get deep in, we got deep into that. Yeah. In the last show we did. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Alpha Centauri info. Yeah. We talked a lot about Alpha Centauri and one of the, in the star seed call that we did. Right. I, I don't know if we, I, I don't know much about Alpha Centauri, actually. I, I don't know if I've ever had any clients go there. Maybe one. I'm trying to remember. I'd have to look in my notes. I don't know much about them. But, uh, you know. Are they to, exist? You know, <laughs> they if someone, it, by the way, if someone wanted to, you know, purchase the, uh, if someone purchased the program and they wanted to do the Starseed Discovery Session instead of the Past Life Regression, that's fine. I'll just, you know, if that's okay with you, I could just... Mm -hmm. it's the same value anyway so i could just substitute that, right. that out they could just ask yeah. me so yeah, yeah yeah absolutely and and that's the thing like the the star seed discovery sessions are also so much fun right so it just yeah. depends yeah, on yeah. what you're looking for in the moment right yeah. so yeah exactly yeah. i've done both i've done all <laughs> so it's like yeah. i love past life regressions but i also love the star seed stuff and it's like oh yeah. you know yeah. so yeah they're and they're all interesting and they all um give you information that your soul wants you to access in that moment so absolutely when you're doing any of these sessions it's not your conscious mind that is running the show it's your higher self that's running the show and says this is what we want her to know now this is what she needs yeah. to know now yeah right? it's it's going into deeper parts it's 
the conscious mind is present, but uh, ideally you slip into kind of higher states of yeah. awareness where there's kind of the, the greater parts of you are now leaking in and being accessed. This is how we access the Akashic records. Yeah. You know, um, uh, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, for any session, I always go in with an open mind and open intention. It's like whatever is for my highest yeah. good, that's what I'm open to receiving. I'm not fixed, yeah. except for sometimes I do come in and say, I want to know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's fine too. But yeah, yeah. And then I don't get that information. So I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So always go in with an open mind, open heart, and just yep. be open to what your higher self wants you to know in this moment. Okay. Exactly. Yep. So I um so again they the offers for um, Matthew are available at alar.at forward slash show forward slash Matthew nine. I will, of course, put all the links in the emails that are going to go out shortly. And as well, I'll put the, the discount code that is only available for 24 hours. I'll put that in the email as well, TACS10, to get a 10% discount on the packages, it's just so you know. Um, and Matthew, is there anything else that you wanted to share with us before we go? Uh, I think we, we went into a lot today, so I, <laughs> not really, um, I, I just, I, again, the past life show that we did, you know, in July was fantastic. People are going to love that. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and watch that too. But, uh, yeah, just, you know, through this, uh, difficult time, um, just create your own reality of peace and joy and love. And, uh, when things come up, you know, the, the more you create, I guess one thing I'll add is the more you create a reality of peace, joy and love when love when things do come up that are unfortunate you're able to handle them better mm. true true and always ask for support ask for support from yes ask your for team. support from your guides right from your friends from your family from from yeah. all of us like ask, you, for, ask like, for support yeah, ask, for sure ask for support yeah absolutely yeah so thank you and thank you everybody yeah. for your questions and comments and feedback i'm sure i missed some because there was like lots of comments in the chat so i apologize if i missed your question or comment um but thank you so much everyone for being here with us like i said this was the the, the launch of the summer autumn 2021 series so thank you thank you yep. thank you for being here with us uh go, definitely go back and watch or listen to this again because there's so much wonderful wonderful information about timelines about and, and watch, reality. watch back to the watch back to the future <laughs> Great. Yes, we um, back to the future one and two. I don't know about three, but you know. You don't like three? I don't know. They're they're all they're all they're I all. Remember, I don't are. remember the third one, but I remember one and two. So watch it oh. and just know that you know what, wherever we think, there's something even more that's possible. And if we think of something, if we have some idea of something, even more is possible. Yeah. You know. So that's what you have to really get. It's like okay, I'm thinking about this. Is this possible? Yes, and even more so right yeah. so yeah the possibilities are really endless yeah they absolutely are. are yeah so uh thank you everyone and thank yeah. you matthew again for thank a wonderful you. show thank you. thank you thank you thank you all right everyone so until next time may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy peace love happiness prosperity and radiant health sending you all much love and blessings always bye for now bye namaste